bacteria in the, in the tissue, well, number one, it's brand new. Uh, you know, there is not so long ago, we just started to uh, admit that there was bacteria on us and in us. Now we are making a leap by saying that they are in the tissue. It has been identified in a normal tissue. We are adding to this conference a new concept that they are as well in the cancer tissue. And not just one agent, but multiple agents, a, a, a real microbiota of, uh, of bacteria in the, the cancer tissues. And so with that discovery in mind, we are just going to try to continue further the, the science quest and try to figure out if these bacteria that are in the cancer tissue Number one, why are they there? Uh, are they there to protect the host against the tumor? Are they there to protect the tumor against the host, which would be bad for us, but that could be a, a way for the tumor to recruit some soldier to protect uh, itself? So that's one big way of discovery. From a diagnostic point of view, the good thing is that we don't really need to know why they are there, but that they are there. And then the next question, are they selectively there? Meaning, is there some specific bacteria in one type of cancer tissue versus another type of cancer tissue? And the answer from what uh, we are discussing here at this meeting is that, yes, it is. Uh, the presence is cancer specific, so you have a different microbiome, the same way that you have a different microbiome, oral microbiome versus fecal microbiome. You may have a different microbiome in a breast cancer tissue from a colon cancer tissue, for example. And this can be used for diagnostic application. Well, the future is bright <laughs> and big. Uh, I think the limitation is not the power of the science, it's the power of some of the tools. On the uh, technological tools, the cost of sequencing is going down. There is new technology to look at metatranscriptomic or metaproteomics that are coming up as well to beef up the technical aspect. I think what we are going to realize now is that we have more data than the human can analyze, and so that's when tools like machine learning or artificial intelligence are going to be crucial so that we can catch up with all of this data to get some meaningful insight. So in a way, it's funny because we are mostly clinician and molecular biologists and microbiologists here, but this science is turning into a computing science as well and big data and data, data, data science. Uh, so I think it's going to have to create a lot of people that have mixed background, biology and computing science. So I think that's where the future is going to, to go, this mixed uh, of technologies.